My name is Frank O'Leary. I'm a veterinary surgeon in Carnstead in County Kerry. Uh, I've been asked by my granddaughter, Carrie Gillard, to pass some comments on my observations on decline of the curl. Carrie Gillard and her family uh, visit there regularly, so she's familiar with the area I'm talking about. I grew up in Dingle, uh, an area of moorland and hills, uplands, boglands, good lands, the sea, and sea estuaries. I was always, I've always been interested in birds, and the tree behind our house in Dingle had a, about five acres and a good patch where we played football nursery. The rest of the field was wet and boggy and an ideal place for Corridor to, to visit. Uh, and we spent many of the time observing them. After we, before and after we played football, the Corridors would leave as we arrived and would come back when we were finished and would call. And the call would more or less indicate to us that they were telling us they would be back when we were gone. We spent many a, an hour up on the trees surrounding the field observing the curlew to see if we could identify where the nests were, two springs in particular, one after another, without success. So we consulted a local legend called Joe, who was a shooter, but a conservationist also, who always said, when he killed what you need for the pot, he had an extraordinary knowledge of nature and wildlife. So we explained our dilemma in relation to identifying the curlew's nest, and his comment was, lads, forget it. Did you know that Jesus gave the curlew special privilege that no man or woman would ever find their nest, and this was the reward for the curlew saving Jesus' life twice. Once when Jesus was escaping from his enemies in the cave and was sleeping and the curlew called, woke him, and he got away. The second time was when he was trying to get away again across a, a sandy beach, leaving his footprints behind him. And the curlew walked behind him and obliterated his footprint so again he escaped, so this was the Curlew's reward. The Curlew has featured in the history of mankind back the eons and back the millennia and was written about in poetry by such an, an eminent poet as Robert Burns, Scottish poet, who said with others that the call of the Curlew gave him great elation. Other uh, anecdotes in relation to the curlew was the curlew's call was sometimes mistaken by lighthouse keepers as a shipwreck and the call of people trying to escape the shipwreck. And I had experience of this tale from a farmer client of mine who spoke about a Spanish trawl run on the rocks not far from Carcedine a couple of hundred years ago. Uh, the locals heard the call some of them, the calling of those trying to escape the boat, but uh, they presumed it was the curlew calling in the night. And unfortunately, they weren't in a position until the following day to identify that the boat was in trouble. And sadly, all the fishermen who were Spanish fishermen fishing off the coast uh, died. But no, but the, the also said that the local said that the boat wasn't expected in the area. Uh, an understandable mistake. So, in England, some people describe the call of the Cordova as the hounds of Gabriel because it was supposed to be the spirits of past huntsmen uh, traveling in the night skies. Uh, so, there's a lot of tales in relation to the Cordova, and uh, there's a very good book if anyone wants to read it. It's 
by night copper with geraniums in the midst of birds, some of those, and it goes out. Spoken about there are written about by Nile in that book, an excellent book. So there's a long association between man and the curlew. We moved to Carsody in the mid 60s when in here and we had a field and fields around us where the curlew was a regular visitors and you would hear the call at night. But it was very striking, very strong, but would indicate that all was right in the world when you heard the alarm, the second call of the curlew, which was an alarm call, uh, obviously telling their friends, the curlews and other birds who were vulnerable at night, the predators to move on, there was danger coming. We are in a situation where there is serious decline. I've spent the last couple of weeks trying to pick up the call of a curlew and no, I have sightings where I used to have sightings on a regular basis before the curlews were around, not in huge numbers but always regular. In certain places in the glens and valleys near the seashore but no, in the last couple of weeks didn't hear a call. I had a visual sight of one in the last month and the previous couple of months I saw two. So the, the decline is more than serious. It has been highlighted by Birdwatch Ireland and by the, the coral conservation groups. My observations on the decline is just is purely on a question basis. Could it be the decline due to the estuaries, which was a, a tidal estuaries in lots of places, uh, have been now covered by oyster and farm, uh, marine farms for oyster, both oysters and mussels, uh, taking away natural habitat. Could it be that the uplands and the moorlands and the boglands are not grazed like they were before? The grasses got extremely thick and matted, so the curlews be, yeah, cannot penetrate. Is it something? in the ground uh, that we're not aware of through some form of, uh, of treatment of the soil or treatment of the grass or treatment of the, the hedgerows that penetrates into the ground and is causing some form of chemical uh, neutralization and kind of a chemical castration of the birds. I don't know what the answer is. Is it the increase in rodents? Uh, in increasing buzzards, uh, birds of raptor, is it an increase in badgers, the foxes, the natural prey of the foxes is the rabbit and they have gone into serious decline. Well, whatever it is, uh, we have a duty of care to the nature and to the curlew at this stage and uh, we can't be agnostic in our thinking that the corridor will be saved or will continue to decline and disappear and therefore will be a major loss to, to nature, the environment and to humans. So we, we're in a very serious position and the uniqueness of the corridor is, apart from the calls, it's a unique call and it has two calls, the second one always being the alarm call, but it also has an unusual anatomical feature in that its beak is like the elephant's trunk when he penetrates the ground or the sand or the estuary, whatever he's going to feel on the moorland, uh, that it can move around underneath like an elephant's trunk to locate its, its uh, prey or its food. But we can't be, we must be elephant-like in our thinking. The elephant, we are told, never forgets. So we can't forget the curlew and we must make every attempt to have the bodies that are organizing the, the scientific research and give them all the feedback we can get from them. So Shane Scale, good luck to everyone.